Hey guys, so I'd like you to uh, take a look at your building section. Okay, so um, for me, I'm going to look at this one right here, and the reason I choose that one is because it kind of jumps up and down through the various high points and low points um, of my ceilings. And actually, now that I'm looking at it, I'm going to pull this up. Um, the reason I'm doing this is because you, you generally don't want to have a section that goes through the, the length of a wall, parallel-wise. Okay, so I'm going to shimmy this up a little bit, a couple inches, and then go into my section. All right, so um, this is my building section, okay? Um, we only did ceiling elements on the first floor, and I want you to look at those ceiling elements. Okay, that's right here, these right here. So what do you notice about them? What do you notice? Same level. Yeah, they're at the same level. So even though um, graphically in um, my RCP, they look like it's popping up, right? That's just a graphic trick that I played in order to make it communicate well. Um, but we actually do need to model it so that it, it jumps up. So where was that section? I'm losing myself here. That's 3D. Oh, I lost the section. Okay, here we go. Um, all right. So uh, what we can do, there are a couple of ways you can change this. All right. In order to change it, guys, um, you kind of need to know tagging. I think that's an easy way to do it. But um, first and foremost, you can obviously select a ceiling and change it manually. Now, the good thing is we know exactly what height that is, because if you look at the RCP in that location, uh, that's... Yeah, um, it tells you that it's 8 foot 11 and 3 eighths, right? So we could literally go into Revit, select the ceiling, and we could go up here and type it in. But I want to show you that during the design process, there are a number of different ways that you can do that. Most conveniently in my mind, because in Revit, you guys really need to be designing in all views, right? Meaning plan, RCP, elevation, 3D, section at all times. Um, the cool thing is I can literally just grab this thing and yank it up so that it sits on the, the, the structure above. So I can use the move command and just pull it up. So now um, that is literally applied to the structure above. Um, additionally, let me go back down. So if this is sitting below, um, at some point during the documentation process, you will mark what the elevation is of all of your surfaces in RCP. So there are a few methods of doing that. Um, the one that we're emulating used spot elevations, which is fine, um, not the way I would typically do it, but um, the spot elevation is a family that's built like this, and it's kind of like a leader-based family, right? You can do something like that, but if you don't need it to be um, leadered, you can um, activate the command and turn off leader and shoulder. If you turn these off, it's just something that you click a spot and then click where you want the text, and that's your, that's your height. So additionally, because these are smart, you can select that element and notice how just like a dimension, the, the text becomes that tiny little blue active text. So I can click that and type my new value, 8 foot 11 and 3 eighths inches. Oh, our structure's messed up. Well, oh, I see, there. It's uh, 10 and 3 quarters for structure, so I've got to fix our floor plate. But we'll get to that another time. Anyway. Um, so, in reality, I guess, for our project right now, that's what it would be, okay? But uh, that's not it, okay? Um, you can have floor, or you can have tags for elements that are smart, that have elevations as well. So, um, rather than using the spot elevation, if you hit TG, that's the um, keynote for tag, um, you click on the ceiling and it'll tell you whether or not you have ceiling tags loaded. So you can hit yes. Um, the tag families, the default ones that are out of the box for Revit, are located under annotations, and then architectural, and then whatever element you're trying to tag. So there's a tag for just the ceiling, which is the ceiling type, meaning, and I'm actually gonna load both of these, but, and then there's one for ceiling tag with height. So let's load both of these, and let's take a look at what they look like. So first off, I'm gonna hit TG, and, uh, Notice how the text kind of shoots off to the side and, and um, has a leader. Again, if you turn off leader, you just click in the surface and it puts it somewhere in the center of the surface. Okay. Notice that it has GWB, 
nine foot, five eighths of an inch, and then um, AFF, meaning uh, above finished floor. So those are all things that are built into the family. Um, you can change the height. So if I want this to go back down to eight feet, I can click it there, and it went back down to eight feet. Or if I want to change what the material, oh, that's not a label, is it? Let me check this one. Oh, it is a label. I won't let me change it. Oh. Uh. Okay, that's news to me. Anyway, I thought it would be a label and you could just click it and change it. But anyway, the other one should be a label. So let's go to uh, ceiling tag boxed. So this ceiling tag reads a, uh, a mark for that uh, element that gives you the material. So if I click in here and I type GWB, it changes it as a type parameter for everything that is this family. So that GWB shows up down here under type mark. And that's something that you'll get into when we get into scheduling and stuff like that. So that's where you start doing like your material takeoffs and quantity takeoffs and stuff like that. Okay. But it's also important for, for um, uh, what am I trying to say? It's also really important for the documentation of the project itself because if you look at the drawing set that we have here, um, there are materials that are tagged. I don't know if these are tagged, but the sections have it. So you can see this stuff right here. Those are all hopefully actually tagged. They might not be. Okay, so that's, that's what you see there. Keynotes are all you know, properly tagged. Okay, so uh, anyway, that was uh, tagging and uh, changing elevations of ceilings. What questions do you have? Okay, for now I think we're just going to stick with some uh, spot elevations, keep it simple, until we get to the more like construction documents-y sort of level um, documentation. Then I'll show you guys like custom tags and stuff like that. Okay, um, I guess let's do a quick video after this about that floor plate and let's get it to be the right, the right, uh, yeah, the right sandwich.